YouTube, it is Trinity Productions, Trinity Pro Sound coming at you. It's been a while since we posted a video. Um, this time we have got a new system from uh, RCF. It is their uh, J Series Evox. This is the J Mix. And um, they sent that uh, this to us and uh, we are going to do one of our um, review videos, take it apart videos of this new um, J series of the uh, Evox um, with a built-in mixer in it. Um, one of the things with this new line is that it is a little bit um, more aimed at, especially with the mixer built in, um, a, a performer, um, somebody that needs to have that kind of input on it. it. Still has the same sound as the one without the mixer and very close um, in uh, sound to the original Evox. However, this one, um, my understanding is, and we'll get into it, um, is um, injection molded as far as the low frequency driver cabinet is concerned, a little bit less weight. And then um, we'll take a look at the top box and everything as well. But um, what we wanna do is go ahead and we'll get this thing opened up and um, talk about the specs on it first and then we'll get into um, the particulars of the cabinet, how it um, stands out or versus the original Evox We'll put a link um, below to our original review of the Evox um, down below if you want to uh, take a look at that. But this is the new um, Evox. Um, these have been selling really quite well. And uh, if you have any more questions on these, um, you, like I said, we'll do it at the end of the video as well. You can either call us or email us or um, put a comment in the video and we will get back to you um, just as soon as we can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the RCF Evox J-Mix. Okay, so we got it opened up. They send everything, all the manuals and everything in a nice little bag. Uh, one of the things that they send you uh, with the serial number on it here is register for the warranty. So RCF warranty is valid for two years from the date of purchase, printed on the receipt and possession. Um, get this document, but this allows you to get the registration, keep this in a safe place, and um, get the extended warranty on the thing. Um, manual in a bazillion different languages. Um, what we are going to do is open this puppy up um, to the uh, English language section and get in and look at the, uh, the specs real quick on this. So the, um, the J-Mix um, frequency response is 40 to 20,000. One of the things that we get a lot of calls about with uh, the Evox series and things like that is that that low frequency box, and we'll get into it, is not truly a subwoofer. It is a low frequency driver. It also kind of doubles up as a sub, but it is not a true subwoofer. Um, so something to keep in mind. You can always augment uh, with another subwoofer to really be able to get that low end um, that a subwoofer would typically do. So um, max SPL on the thing, 128 dB, so it is pretty powerful. Um, horizontal coverage, they're stating 120 degrees. I'm thinking more like 180 degrees. Um, vertical coverage, 30, so with that array, they've got very good forward coverage. Um, it does have the um, Low frequency transducer is a 12 inch, um, two and a half inch voice coil, and then they've got eight uh, two inch speakers in there with a one inch voice coil. Um, power on the thing is um, 1400 watts peak, so 700 watts RMS. The crossover frequency on it is at 220 hertz, so it's up there a little bit to take care of some of that low mid that that top box is not gonna be able to um, produce. Um, it does have um, thermal drift and RMS um, Protection it has limiter, convective cooling, no fans, yeah. Uh, operating voltage, 115, 230, um, just depending on model. And then um, current-wise, typically are not going to have to worry about that. These things just don't draw that much current. Um, weight of the unit, let's see here. Net weight, 53 pounds. So um, cabinet um, is polypropylene. Um, the JMix version of it does have four mic inputs on it, as we'll see. It does have phantom power available on channels one and two, um, four mono line inputs, um, stereo line input, 
um, has a selectable input compressors, it's got an aux output, it's got USB, it's got internal effects on it, it's got uh, high pass filters you can set for it. Um, it has uh, three band shelving high low and uh, come at a semi parametric mid. Um, so as far as the rest of the specs are doing on the thing, um, sampling rates on the processor 44, 48 kilohertz. So um, really a nice little system. My guess is they probably took some stuff out of the MR18 um, to be able to um, do this thing with the J-Mix. I think it does have Bluetooth built into it, but I didn't see that on here, but I'm pretty sure that it does. So anyway, um, with that said, let's go ahead and get it open and we'll show you what is in the box um, that comes with the RCF um, E-Box J-Mix. Okay, so here we got it open and out, and so you can see what the, uh, the J-Mix looks like in its um, polypropylene enclosure. Um, what comes in it, let's go ahead and rotate this around. They've got the speaker um, in the rear of the unit here, like the, uh, they have with the, uh, the original E-Box. Um, it doesn't slide in like the original E-Box, but it tucks in nicely. Um, they've got it in a plastic bag, and then this little rubbery strap comes off to be able to release it. And out of the bag it goes. Um, the top is um, polypropylene, um, just like the um, this speaker here, not like the original E-Box. Um, I had thought that it was wood, though. Um, pretty solid little little speaker. Same drivers, um, though, in the uh, the J-Mix as with the uh, the original E-Box um, itself. So, but this little guy just kind of tucks back in there, and then this little rubbery strap goes around the little holder there and nice neat little package for transportation. Um, with it also comes the IEC power cord, so probably a 8 to 10 foot power cord. And then also in the box is the speaker cable. So this is um, typical um, speak on type connection to conductor, go up to the top box. And then they also include the poles that go with it in a nice little bag. Those come out. I know, don't, don't mind me throwing things. Gets them out of the way a little bit quicker. So this is the first pole that goes in here. And these are all on solid M20 threads that screw in, so very um, robust. Um, as with the original Evox, and then this guy goes up on top, which nobody can see, but you get the point. So, and the poles are pretty nice. Um, these are not junk like some of the other manufacturers have um, with their systems. They give you a nice little bag to put them in to transport everything. Um, also, they give you the little clippies here that go over the pole so that you can then tuck in on the back of your cabinet as you get set up, um, tuck in the speaker connector cable so that it is just a nice seamless, there's no wires hanging out that anybody's really gonna see floating or anything like that. So um, they've really done a nice job with um, the whole Evox line, whether it's the Evox 8, Evox 12, the Evox J series, um, they've really done a good job. Handle on this thing, um, got a, you know, pretty solid, formidable, um, gets a good grip. Um, the thing's not too heavy by itself. So, you know, probably the whole thing with the poles and everything is what the weight is that they're calculating out. This is probably maybe 40, 45 pounds total. So very um, easy to, to transport. So one of the things we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and take this speaker out and kind of look at the back of this. So in looking at this um, identical amplifier to the, uh, to the E-Box 8, um, maybe a little bit different DSP tuning because of the polypropylene cabinet um, that they have put this in. But, um, you know, the RCF amplifiers, uh, as we have said in some of our um, previous videos, they are just rock solid being that they are convective cooled. You don't have to ever worry about fans or anything like that um, going out 
and causing heat issues. So everything being convection and this is just one solid massive aluminum heat sink for the power amplifier. Um, we've run stuff with our Art series, HD series, TT series, I mean, just everything. We've run it in the, um, the hot California sun in the Central Valley with the sun baking on things and have um, yet to have an amplifier failure um, from overheating. So um, really that kudos um, to RCF. So um, with that then, uh, we're gonna try to flip this thing down here and uh, take a look at the mixer portion of it. So let's go ahead and do that. And maybe what we'll do is zoom in a little bit on it. We'll stop the video here. So we've got the, um, the camera zoomed in a little bit here on the mixer on this guy. Um, first one is a mic line input, another mic line, another mic line, mic line instrument, stereo line in and, and stereo line in. There is a foot switch and a aux out. Master level here. This is all level controls. And these are going to be select buttons. We'll go ahead and take a look at that though when we get into it because they're going to select different things. Um, as far as input levels, the things that come up on this display um, with the J-Mix itself. So um, not a lot of controls to it, um, which is kind of nice. And then as far as the input section is on it, these are all um, quarter inch as well as XLR inputs for the first four. So you can do either or. Five and six is quarter, seven and eight is um, RCAs, and then quarter inch for foot switch, quarter inch for an aux out on the thing, maybe to feed some ears or off to another um, satellite speaker or system. So you still also have the link on it to come out of the amplifier off to another speaker as well. Um, so a lot of um, capabilities um, within the uh, the J-Mix here um, as far as somebody going in setting up for a gig or whatever uh, with two of these um, that you know there's a lot of capabilities typically you'd want one with the J-Mix in it one that is not a J-Mix um, there's really no need to run two units that are um, J-Mixes so what we're going to do um, now we're going to go ahead and get into it take it apart we're probably not going to pull the mixer portion but we are going to pull the amplifier portion so that we can see the speaker driver in it and also the construction um, of what is inside the uh, the cabinet of the uh, rcf j mix well we've got it opened up and one of the things um, that we felt was noteworthy to show you um, we did get the back of it opened up and you can kind of see in there that they do have some uh, a wood brace stiffener in there. We're going to go ahead, and that's why we pulled the front grill off as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this puppy up and take out this 12-inch um, driver in here. Um, they've done some things on this box that um, I think are really quite um, kind of on the cutting edge when it comes to polypropylene cabinets as far as stiffening them to help reduce resonance and things like that to get the the you know the best and the premium sound out of a plastic cabinet um, that they possibly can that I've not seen um, any other manufacturers do that are doing a polypropylene or injection molded plastic cabinet. So they do have some porting down here, um, tuning that they've done with this, um, and the way that they've got the uh, kind of the waveguide set up to uh, get the low frequency out of this puppy. Um, we're going to go ahead and get this 12-inch driver pulled out and so we can see all the way through it, um, kind of show you what the 12-inch driver looks like and um, maybe just take a quick look at the amplifier as well. It's standard um, Evox amp and we'll get into that and show you that as well. Okay, so we've got the 12-inch driver out. Um, it is um, just like the other Evox series. It is a uh, stamped basket. It's got a... Um, Ceramic magnet on the thing, pretty robust, um, probably close to 
eight, nine pounds uh, as far as total weight with the magnet on it. Um, standard paper cone surround on it. So um, we'll get this out of the way over here. Let's go ahead and turn this though and take a look at the inside. So as you can see what they've done with this with the wooden bracing in it, they've got some dampening material that you can kind of see inside there to help with the, uh, the cabinet resonance and uh, transferring that into the um, plastic, which a lot of manufacturers do not do. As far as the grill assembly that we pulled off, um, it is held on with four screws into the polypropylene cabinet. But one of the other things that I think is quite noteworthy um, of what they've done and gone kind of the extra mile, so to speak, is they've got this little rubber ring that they have put into where the grill seats around the edge so that when this thing is tightened down, uh, there is no chance of that grill vibrating against the, um, the polypropylene. So, um, you know, RCF really does take care in ensuring that their systems um, are engineered and the customers are going to be happy with them. Um, they're going to offer wonderful sound for years and years to come and you're not going to be plagued with um, something where, you know, a screw comes loose and the grill's going to vibrate or the grill's going to vibrate when it's low, you know, hitting some low frequency notes and things like that. So, you know, they really kind of pay attention to detail that a lot of the other manufacturers um, just don't flat out do. So all the way through, you know, you can see, but they've got, um, this is a laminated um, ply in there that they've got in as a stiffener um, into the cabinet and then along with the, uh, the batting that's in there as well. As far as the amplifier is concerned, um, looks like the standard amplifier that's in the E-Box. Um, power transistors, semiconductors along the side here and into the heat sink here and here and 115 volt operation on this, um, power switch, fused, IEC input. You've got XLR in here and then a link through here. You've got a volume control, um, input sensitivity. Uh, you've also got noting that you've got input from the mixer coming into it here, limiter, signal, and power lights, and then it's got a flat and a boost mode um, on it as well. So just like the, um, the RCF um, E-Box series. And with that said, we're probably going to go ahead and get the amp back in, the 12-inch driver. I think we need to pay some attention to um, the mixer and show you how that operates as well um, on this unit. The one without the mixer, though, is just going to have this input and link through on it um, on the, uh, the standard J-series um, without the mix um, into the picture. So, but even, you know, beaten on the side of the thing, it doesn't sound like it's plastic and it is pretty stinking solid. Um, they've done a really nice job with the ergonomics of this whole thing and so, um, you know, without everything inside of it, um, 12 pounds probably as far as total weight is concerned without the speaker and the amplifier and everything um, into this um, system. Um, I haven't had one of these things um, fired up yet to be able to play with the DSP, so um, we're going to end up kind of learning on that together. But it looks like it is just absolutely packed um, full of features into this little mixer um, that a you know single performer, small band or something um, can go in and not have to take in a separate mixer, be able to take this or a companion, um, just a J-series E-Box and do a small gig. I did hear this thing at uh, Infocom this year in Las Vegas in the RCF demo room, and quite frankly, I was blown away by the, um, the low-end output out of this J-Series. Um, they've done some things on it that I think that the regular Evox um, is good, um, but I think this thing, um, because it's plastic and the weight and everything, I think it um, has got a little bit better low-end to it. Um, that may just be me. We are going to be doing a video where we are going to compare the J-Mix, the regular Evox. We're going to do an Evolve 50. We're going to do a DB Technologies ES503 and probably a FBTCS1000 um, in that whole mix. Um, we've had some turbo sound um, in the past. The um, I think it was the IP2000 or something um, that kind of competes with these. And I'm just... Um, not impressed with that. 
So that won't even be coming into, um, into the mix on these things at all. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this thing buttoned back up and um, play with a little bit with a mixer. What we'll do is flip this thing um, probably onto its back and uh, so we can see the DSP display and everything for it and be able to operate some of the knobs and things like that in, into the input section um, so we can uh, kind of get an overall picture of um, what this little mixer in the uh, RCF Evox J-Mix is all about. So we're back together with the grill. Here's speakers back in and what we're going to end up doing is with the amplifier they have a lot of stuff tie wrapped down on it so we're going to ensure that we kind of follow exactly what they did from the factory in making sure that everything that came out of this thing goes back in the same way and gets tie wrapped in so that if in fact we do sell this unit that um, somebody's not going to have a problem with it with stuff falling off or out and now we're back to factory specs the last little thing that we have to plug in they've got a little ribbon cable that goes into the amplifier from the uh, the mixer same amplifier so they can use the amp on either one of the J series so that's kind of nice and that thing tucks back up in there like that and we'll go ahead and interesting we'll get the screws back in okay so there we are back together with the grill the 12 inch speaker amplifiers back in um, no screws were stripped in the filming of this speaker this is always nice and there was no leftover hardware which is always a fun one that we don't have to take it back apart and find out where did this go um, one thing are we're going to do we are going to do is um, we're going to pull the grill on this thing and maybe pull one of the speakers out to show you what that looks like i think we did that in our uh, evox um, 8 video and so we'll go ahead and um, and do it on this one as well so you can at least see what the inside of the cabinet looks like and also what kind of drivers that they're using on the uh, the evox j series okay so we got it apart this is the grill um, same kind of construction on yeah. the top box um, they do have the gasket around there so that no rattling but these are the little drivers that make up this um, 120 by 30 degree waveform slightly curved as you can kind of see um, to be able to get the, uh, the angle and the alignment um, on these speakers has the pole cup in the bottom of it and then also there is the um, NL probably NL2 I'm thinking what that is with two conductors on it um, locking connector that um, goes in there and um, we're going to go ahead and pull one of these little drivers out and show you what that is. Um, it's quite amazing um, the sound output that they can get out of these things with just eight two inch speakers. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. So we're going to go ahead and get that pulled and show you what those look like. Okay so we got the driver pulled. Um, looking at the cabinet there is some dampening material in there. Uh, these guys are probably all wired together in kind of a series parallel configuration to either present a 4 ohm or an 8 ohm load um, to the uh, amplifier. I'm kind of assuming probably a 4 ohm load, but um, whoops, just about lost it there. But um, the tap on it and it's it's pretty solid. I want to kind of walk around here and show you uh, this driver. We'll get it in focus here. So um, this is it, um, little stamp frame, uh, magnet on the back there, um, kind of a cooling, the voice coil's got uh, cooling inside of it. You can kind of see with the, uh, the paper former in there, um, it's not gonna focus too well, but yeah, you can see inside there what they've done with that um, to help with the cooling on it. And then it's all slotted all the way around on the edges. Um, and then um, this is an 8 ohm driver so I'm guessing that it probably will then if everything is wired kind of in a series 
parallel configuration, probably be presenting four ohms um, to the uh, to the amplifier itself. So um, pretty stinking slick little um, little speaker uh, from RCF. So we'll get back on the other side of the table here and probably put this puppy back together. And, um, and then what we'll do is play with the mixer portion of this thing and then um, run a little bit of audio through it. Um, not going to really be able to, you know, with these microphones and things, you're not going to really be able to tell until we get in to do our kind of our lineup test, um, which is going to be our next video that we're going to post. We've had a lot of people that are undecisive um, between Evolve 50 or JMix or Evox or the DB Technologies um, ES series, um, FBT. And um, each of them have their own unique sound to them. Um, the JMix and the Evox 8 are very similar. Um, but, you know, each of them have their own, you know, things that they do well or not as well as some of the competing lines. Um, so we're going to try to take a setup of those things and do some listening tests, probably get out the zoom recorder um, to be able to record something in a higher bit rate and in stereo to be able to get it into the video that we're not doing something through an iPhone um, or a lapel mic as far as a listening experience. Then you can pop on some headphones and, um, and take a listen and kind of make your own decisions. We're going to be doing probably commenting during that whole video as well. So anyway, sidelight. But anyway, we'll go ahead and just get this back together, play with the mixer a little bit, and um, kind of take a listen of what this new um, Evox J Mix is all about. All right, we'll go ahead and get this back together. And um, it's one of those that brings back a memory of when I was building speakers in the garage when I was much younger, um, in my teen years. and. Um, didn't have a really good understanding, but thought building speaker cabinets with multiple speakers in them was the way to go. But um, putting things together with the uh, screwdrivers and drills and stuff that they had back then, they really didn't have the electric variable speed stuff and ended up getting a screwdriver bit into the regular electric drill and slipped off and put a drill or a screwdriver bit right through a brand new speaker. And so back then, which was, and I'll date myself, but um, late 60s, early 70s, and um, what do you do, you know? So you talk to the electronics teacher and he's like, the only thing you can do is get some glue and some paper and repair it. So um, that's what we did, worked, but, um, Unfortunately, because of the way that that cabinet went together and not understanding principles of audio when you're a kid, um, sounded like crap. So anyway, little side note as I digress, but um, we're back together. We're going to go ahead and get the grill on this thing and get it fired up. Okay, so we've got the um, thing back together, powered up. We've got the speaker here laying on top of it because we're vertically challenged here in this space and especially being on top of the table. We'll, we'll come around on the other side and go through some of the, um, the DSP settings on this and kind of show you what, um, what this is all about. And so with that, let me kind of get out of the way of the camera here. So I've got the main setting. We've got some buttons up here. This is a home. This is the system um, setup. Um, this is your master effects. This is um, your FX channel itself. Um, it has a lot of um, different things in it. Each one of these buttons will then select the appropriate channel that you want to go to and calls up um, the levels and the effects level, the aux level um, on those. You do have a knob here that you can change things with and then these are your select to go over to different levels. Um, whether you want to mute it, you can then punch the button in. You go home on it and you've got metering, which will show up here um, as the thing starts to um, get inputs on it. As far as the input is concerned, that is your FX, that's your aux level, pan mode, it's pan center. You can do left, right um, on it, mute the channel. Um, 
let's see here as far as some of these channels though and it's pretty much the same across all of them um, and you can see kind of how they're stereoed and gang together um, let's see if we can go home select a channel so if you press and hold the button it comes up into some other um, EQs for everything um, and then you can just go through all of the different um, gain settings, preamp settings. Um, let's go in here. You can turn phantom power on so you can go over here and select to turn phantom power on or off. And again, like I said, we're going to be learning this together because I've really not gotten into and played much with the um, the mixer and it looks like a lot of this is from the MR18 um, just in a kind of a scaled down um, version. It's got compressor um, that you can put onto it and the amount uh, of compression. Um, it's got the EQ low, mid, high and also the, um, the frequency that the mid is at as well. Gain levels so a lot of different things um, you can see with the input here you go levels three band eq the preamp the dynamics output you can set the mains seven band eq auxiliary sets um, the aux seven um, eq you press home you get the vu meters the info and the mixer is on and off so it tells you the firmware um, tells you that it, the mixer is enabled so you can turn that on or off you hit the system button that is loading and saving settings and then your multi effects gets into settings A and B amp simulations modulation delay and then the FX the Z core um, FX button here gets you into reverbs delays and modulations that you can apply to the different channels depending on where those settings are as you go into a um, let's go home go into a channel here we can see with the effects that we can end up, depending on how much effects we want to dial into that particular channel and, um, and be able to do that, how much aux send we have, panning, left, center, right, mute, and that's the overall level um, of that channel. So, and then this is your main output, and then you've got your main output with the processing on it and everything as well. So, um, it tells you it's in stereo you can swap the left and right so there's a lot of capabilities to the um, to the uh, jmix 8 system that um, not many other mixers have it does have bluetooth up here so i don't know if you can see that tucked up there it's kind of that light flash in there it does have a usb port on it so that you can update firmware as that becomes available so a lot of these are multi-press buttons that you can go through and it will then tell you, you know, 40 phantom power, you want it on or off. You can, so oh, here it is here. So in the multi effects, let's scroll down to that. Let's go here. So you can get into amp modeling. Um, I mean, it's just got all sorts of things that you can go in and play as far as the drive, the bass, the mids, the trebles, and things like that. Um, Chorusing, you can set up on it. Um, it almost like a whole little pedal box, um, all in one, built into the mixer. So, a um, lot of capabilities um, with the uh, with the J mix, um, especially designed for you know a small group that's got you know a couple of mic inputs, maybe a guitar, acoustic, electric um, on it maybe some keys or something, and it is all-inclusive that everything can be done um, right from the, uh, the mixer itself and don't have to bring in a, uh, another mixer or anything to the venue. Very easy to operate, set up, and run. So um, they've really done a nice job with it. Uh, I wish that I had a little bit more time to get into the, uh, the operation um, of the mixer on it, but... Um, with that, um, what we're really, and I think everybody is kind of interested in, whether it's the J-Mix or just the J-Series, is what the crap does it sound like? So um, we're going to go ahead, flip this thing up. Um, you're not going to be able to really tell and understand, but we're going to comment as we run some content through this. 
and um, just kind of let you know our thoughts again. Like I said, we did hear it at Infocom down in Las Vegas in the demo room and was quite impressed with it. So, um, you know, for a nice little cabinet and the price point that it is, it is less than the standard Evox because it is now a plastic cabinet and not a wooden cabinet like the Evox 8 is or the Evox 12. Um, so it is offered at a little bit better price point um, because the manufacturing costs are not as high with it. But with that, with the J-Mix, they've added a whole lot of more features in. And then if you just want to just do the standard J-Series, have your own mixer incorporated into that, um, you've got that capability as well at a little bit better of a price point um, for this particular series of speaker. So with that said, we're going to go ahead, flip this thing up, and run some audio through it. Okay, so we are together. Um, what we're going to end up doing is I've got um, a noise generator here that I want to send through. Um, we start out with um, 31.5 hertz and we're going to end up running that through this and just kind of letting you hopefully through this microphone hear it. 31. It's there, it's just down really low. 31. 40. There's 40, it's producing 40. 40. 50. There's 50. 50. 63. 63. 63. 80. 80. 80. 100. So let's go back down to 31. 40. It's there. It's doing it. 40, 50. Let's go. 31. 31 is a challenge. 31, 40. But 40, it'll do. 40 is a little bit down, though. 40, 50. Probably half, so it's probably a good 3 dB down. 50, 63. That's a little bit louder. 63, 80. 80 is a little bit louder. 80, 100. 1K, 2.5, 2K, 5K, 10K, 12K, 5, 20K. So it will do all the way down to 40. It's just going to be a few dB down, but the thing with that is that even though this is a low frequency, quote unquote, subwoofer box, um, it's just going to be down and um, driving it at that um, level. Um, you do risk, because it's a 12 inch driver, you do risk um, having issues with that of um, over excursion on it that you can put this thing through. It's got a lot of power behind it. So um, with this RCF amp, but um, it'll do it. I mean, that is pretty stinking amazing. And with that, let's go back to it and feel for some resonance on the cabinet. We'll go to 31.5 first. So the table shaking. 31. There's 40. You can feel it in the cabinet a little bit. 40. 50. 50 you can feel. 63. 80. So with that though, but they've done a really good job in dampening that so a lot of that energy is not transferred to the, um, to the polypropylene cabinet um, itself. So, I mean, it's got, you know, some pretty decent sonic quality to it, um, playing just, you know, Bluetooth tracks through it. Um, great little speaker. So, um, really, um, they've done a nice job with it. Uh, Evox J-Mix 8. So, 
that's kind of it for the RCF J-Mix. Um, if you have any more questions, um, hopefully we can help you. Sorry I couldn't get into um, the amplifier and DSP section um, a little bit further, but it's got a boatload of capabilities to it um, that, um, uh, like I said, I think they've taken this, uh, this from the uh, MR18 that they have out, um, which is a nice little um, wireless iPad mixer um, as well that RCF has made. Um, but just, you know, tons of capabilities for the musician, even for a, you know, a DJ application, um, maybe not with the mix portion of it, but with the, just the standard J8, um, you know, a nice little system that is very light. You can go in and easily do a couple hundred people um, on a dance floor for a wedding um, or smaller event like that. Um, like I've told you in the past with um, some of the deployments we've done, um, We've done the RCF um, Evox um, 8s into a church of about 250 people as a setup um, just to see how it would do. We've also done the uh, DB Technology ZS503s. We've done the FBT CS1000s. Um, did take in the TurboSound one, but unfortunately that one just kind of failed sonically um, just right out of the chute for us, so um, didn't even consider that. But um, this one, a pair of these things, um, 250 people, no problem at respectable levels. Like I said, we run full bands through the Evox 8s. Um, we've run it through some of the other competing lines, and, um, and we're talking full band. We're talking electronic drums, electronic bass, electronic keys, vocalists, guitars, I mean, everything, and um, at really respectable levels, um, running it off of a uh, X32 console. So, um, I think you know you've got something here um, with this and, and with the Bluetooth because that's what we're running through right now is it's paired to Bluetooth. Um, the thing's really got um, some good output, some really good features, and it is made well. I mean, with that stiffener in there, like I, I, we were talking about earlier, uh, with that stiffener, you've just got something that RCF brings to the table that a lot of the other manufacturers just don't. So. Um, with that said, uh, if you have any questions, get a hold of us. You can reach out to us. Um, call us, area code 209-832-8023. You can look us up on the web at www.trinityprosound.com. And uh, we've got our website there that you can kind of see what we're all about. Um, again, apologize for not getting videos up. Um, it's been a while. Um, we've just been involved with a lot of um, installs. Um, which we are going to be doing some highlight videos on as well and uh, been doing some design work and working with architects so things have just really been kind of slammed along with our production schedule as well but um, thank you for watching thank you for those that of you that have subscribed to the channel um, really appreciated um, we are over 10,000 subscribers now and without you this would not be possible so again thank you very much um, reach out to us in the comment section if you have any comments on this or any of the other videos that we've done. Um, we do appreciate you watching um, in this whole Take It Apart series and uh, looking forward to the next video with you. Again, thank you and uh, we will see you soon. Again, it's Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com. And this is the RCF Evox J8 Mix.